Okay, I think we can start. Um, hello and welcome everyone to our first uh, webinar Toloka 101. My name is Anna. I'm the manager for corporate education in Toloka. Uh, and of course, thank you very much for joining us today, uh, this evening, or maybe you have another time in your, uh, in your place. Anyway, uh, thank you again. And uh, now I would like to walk you through our agenda for today. Uh, first, we will talk about uh, the logo itself. Uh, we will make an overview, how you can use it and which tools can be uh, important uh, during your, uh, your tasks. Uh, then uh, we will have a live demonstration based on uh, use case on image classification. And at the end, we will have a Q&A session uh, where we will answer your, sorry, we will, um, yes, answer your questions. So during all the webinar, you can send your questions in the Q&A box, uh, or at the end, also, you can uh, ask your questions uh, live, uh, unmuting yourself. Um, so uh, now I would like to um, introduce you with our speakers for today. We will have David Baron. He is a regional director in Toloka. Uh, and we will have also Raman Gaif. He is a customer success manager. And me, the moderator of this event. So um, now I will give the floor to David. David, can you hear us? Yes, yes, Anna, thank you. Great. Thank you. I hope you can hear me as well. Yes, and perfect. you see my presentation? Yes. Great. So thank you, Anna, for introducing me. And uh, hello, everyone who joined this webinar. I hope you will find it useful. Uh, I'm going to tell you a bit about uh, what Taloka does uh, for machine learning and specifically for data in machine learning. And when we talk about the production of AI algorithms, usually it is based on three main pillars that contribute to the quality of AI products and services. So uh, the first one is algorithms and uh, methods for the AI models. The second is uh, the computational facilities. And the third, which was overlooked by the industry for many, many years is uh, data. And uh, data has become a real bottleneck in the AI community. Um, so the AI community paid less, less attention to the third pillar. And in the nearest future, this uh, gap will be filled and will already is the main focus in the machine learning development. And just to put it into some numbers, uh, about 80% of uh, AI project time is spent on getting your data into order. So when you think about it, just 20% uh, of AI project time is spent on actual development, training and tuning and uh, making your algorithms work better. So for that exact uh, purpose, we in, T in Toloka uh, came to solve that problem by having a really smart uh, marketplace or platform to basically solve the data for machine learning problem. And uh, with that being said, before I go any further, how about you tell us about yourself we will also launch a poll so you can answer some questions. But now you can see it on the screen before your eyes. So we will happy you can write if you know about crowdsourcing. Uh, have you used it before? Uh, you can write about your interesting projects in the uh, comment section. Thank you. It's sound. I see people already are filling in. Great, so we will, we will wait one more minute. Thank you guys, keep filling it up, it helps a lot. Great, and, and just feel free to write any questions in, in the uh, comment section. Uh, we will be sure to answer them in the Q&A session. So what is Toloka essentially? Toloka is a two-sided marketplace where on the one side performers come to complete the task 
And the requesters on the other side, which can be large tech companies or small uh, machine learning researchers, they create projects to have their data labeled. And uh, they all come together on the platform in order to solve uh, a high level problem. So each performer or taloker, as we call them, makes a small contribution. And uh, for this, this exact purpose in the intelligent, in, in the platform, they get their data labeled in the highest quality. And how we can achieve, how Taloka can achieve this. So Taloka is a powerful tool for data labeling and can be achieved through scalability, speed, accuracy and quality and cost efficiency. So in, in the center of it all, our platform helps to get the best uh, labeled data to train your algorithms. And uh, machine learning algorithms are as good as the data that they are being fed with. Taloka essentially started, so it's a bit of a history. Taloka started as an infrastructure platform for Yandex. And Yandex is uh, the largest tech company in uh, Europe. And for the past 10 years, Yandex has been had been using Taloka for a variety of different products, including search, e-commerce, self-driving, voice assistant, and more. So all of these products use machine learning algorithms. And all of these products were trained using Taloka and using the huge crowd of performers that we established through the years. And these performers are located all over the, the globe in every time zone, 24 hours a day. And they speak the most common languages in the world. So you can basically run a project at uh, any time and you can see that somebody will pick it up. And uh, before you, you can see real life use cases uh, and you can see that they took a very short period of time and uh, the investment, the amount that was paid for them was small. And we could actually achieve it through intelligent process management and quality control. So in Taloka, you manage the processes and not the people. And it begins with selecting the performers uh, by language, age, gender, different filters. Uh, and the second step is training them, uh, examining them, and making sure that only performers that uh, have the highest mark can really go to your uh, paid tasks. So basically, with that, you make sure that you get the highest uh, performer uh, uh, results. So the third step is project level controls. And as we call them, quality control rules. And these are smart, uh, rules inside a platform that allow you to have, uh, again, um, more quality and make sure that only the best results. And for example, you can see that uh, we, we use something that is called overlap, which means that several performers are, look, are annotating the same task. And uh, the best, uh, the task with the best quality is taking to the aggregation, which is the last part. And eventually it's all, it all packed, packed up into one uh, ready data set that is used to your machine learning algorithms to train your models. And besides being a data labeling platform, Taloka also contributes to the crowd science community by supporting academic research uh, and innovation, holding workshops and seminars uh, in leading AI conferences uh, and helping advancing machine learning development as a whole. So we're not only a technical solution for data labeling, but we're also a, a contributor to the entire industry uh, and the crowd science as a whole. And uh, further to that, Taloka Academy, which was the organizer of today's event, is a education specialist uh, to use Taloka through a series of webinars. This is the first of many to come. And uh, you can join the webinars. Uh, we will have tutorials. We are uh, taking part in conferences. And actually, if you want already to start learning about crowdsourcing and data labeling, we have a great Coursera course that you can go to Coursera and start now uh, learn about crowdsourcing, data labeling, and uh, help your algorithms uh, be better and have the best data and quality. So I hope you enjoyed my part. Now we'll move to the interesting part, which is the live demo. You can see how it all works. And my colleague here 
Roman will uh, show you a real uh, demo and uh, real use cases of image classification. Roman? Hello, guys. Uh, hello. Uh, hope you can hear me well. Uh, thank you, David. Uh, thank you. Well, my part is quite interesting, but not, not more interesting than yours. Uh, thank you for detailed explanation of what Talaka is about and giving us some ideas on uh, what is the scale and uh, what you can solve with this tool. Uh, I have just seen the results of your poll, guys, and I see that a lot of you guys, uh, you heard about Taloka, but you never tried it before, and you are quite familiar what, with what crowdsourcing is, so probably this particular section will be of the most interest, uh, interest for you, so you can uh, see the product in use, basically. Um, I just want to share my screen right now and go to the Locker website. And this is how it looked like for a requester. So if you're a client that wants to label uh, his or her data on the Locker, this would be your main page here. And today I just want to show you a little bit of the interface and what is uh, what the Locker is capable of and also uh, start a live project with um, and get some data results just a minute and for a very little amount of money. And yeah, you didn't get me wrong, that's it. We will get some results here in a very short amount of time uh, for a basic image classification project. Uh, but uh, getting back to Taloka's interface, uh, so main, uh, we have several tabs here in the header. So the first one is projects tab. It is the main tab where you can observe all of your projects and uh, you, where you can create the project. Well, the second tab is uh, users tab. And here you, you can access all the information about your users that has been participating on your project. You can uh, see all the information, like what's the rating of the user, because Taloka essentially we has, uh, evaluate the rating of every user among, across all the projects, all the clients. So we know how, um, uh, how skilled the performer is. Also, you can see how many tasks your performer completed, how much money he or she earns, and also the country and age. Uh, you can filter out and get the uh, group of performer based on their devices, based on their operational systems, and much, much more. And performer's profile, of course, uh, you can filter them out using date of birth, city, location, uh, agenda, and many more. Right, so basically, uh, this is user section. Uh, we also have skills section. What are those skills? Uh, well, you can assign a skill to every performer that's participated on your project based on their performance and how good they are in doing your tasks. So uh, essentially, probably you may guess that uh, skills of different performers are different and they may vary across different uh, domains. Uh, for example, the performer who's doing good at image classification might not be that good in search relevance. So that's why you keep those skills separated and you uh, take control of them and you can uh, pick the best performers accordingly uh, whenever you have uh, any requirements here. Uh, the next section is profile. So every request, of course, can control uh, spendings, can control uh, any integration with external systems. So you can use our Taloka API or Python SDK and uh, build uh, large scale pipelines with Taloka programmatically. And the last section in the header is messages. So here you can communicate with your performers. Uh, right. So as David mentioned, we have a lot of performers, like millions of them across all the countries, but you can communicate with each of them. You can contact groups of the performers based on uh, the skills, based on their location and uh, all the filters that I have shown you. You can pick any group of performers and uh, write a message to them, for example, just to advertise your project or maybe to answer some frequently asked questions. Right, so also quite a handy tool here. But uh, let's wait no more and let's uh, get to the project. Um, so today I just wanted to show you a quick image classification project. 
uh, where we will be basically classifying two types of pictures. Uh, we will have a task of classifying, uh, is it a cat or a dog in the picture? And performers will have to decide uh, what kind of animal is in the picture. So I like I deliberately picked the most cutest photos here and the most cutest uh, project for you guys <laughs> so that you can enjoy. Uh, and this interface uh, is exactly what performers um, will see on Taloka's performers website. So they will see this interface and they will be able to choose what each picture is about. So they can enhance the picture, they can actually rotate it. So there are a lot of uh, customizable features in the interface that you can adjust uh, according to your project. And uh, performers can of course read the instruction to understand what the task is about. So our end goal for today is to build such a simple project and to get some results for 100 uh, rows of data with photos. So um, let's get it started. Um, I'm getting, uh, I've got back to the interface and I'm clicking on this big uh, blue-ish button here. Uh, what do we have here? We have a lot of templates for different types of projects for you guys. So based on uh, your domain, based on your business goal, you can pick the most relevant for you. So you can see the sections with video and image data, with uh, selection of bounding boxes, text recognition uh, on the image, in the image, side-by-side -side comparison, image classification, and even video moderation. So sometimes you have to moderate some uh, TV shows or put some markers on the timeline, right? So we also, of course, have text data with sentiment analysis, NER, named entity recognition uh, task classification, audio data templates with voice record recording tasks for telokers, data enrichment, uh, meaning some data surveys and some questionnaires, and spatial crowdsourcing. Spatial crowdsourcing is a very special feature in Taloka where you can send uh, your performers online in the real world to collect some data. For example, you want to collect data for your maps application on uh, businesses. For example, you want to know opening hours of restaurants in your neighborhood. So you can send to lockers and collect the data or maybe collect some photos of the buildings, right? But for now, uh, we're going to pick this image classification project I'm selecting here. And uh, in this template, we have uh, the template prepared for what is the cat's mood uh, project. But our project is slightly different, so we need to adjust it uh, real quick. The our project is it a cat or a dog in the picture. So I'm going to change uh, those values here. And what do they actually mean? So this is, is going to be a general information about your project. And on the right side, you see this uh, little flashcard, uh, which basically, this is exactly how performers will see your project on Taloka's website. They will see this card with the name of the project uh, and explanation, short description what this project is about and how much money they can earn. That. So I'm going to change those sections real quick. Uh, is a cat or a dog. Right. Um, and look at the picture and decide whether. It is a cat or a dog. Right. Cool. And you can even leave a private comment, which will be invisible for performers. So I kind of just write a local one one demo, which is not to miss the project in the whole bunch of projects that I had there, you remember. So the next step is creating task interface. So here we create how the project will look like for performance, right? So this is our template. And uh, as you remember, it was for what is the cat smooth project. So we need to adjust it to this form. Uh, it's quite similar, so it won't take that much time. And uh, how you actually build interfaces on Taloka is there are two different ways. You can either use HTML, JS, and CSS uh, tools to build it, and it's gonna 
be highly customizable if you know those um, languages and markup and programming languages, or you can use our pre-built, um, um, our embedded template builder. So what is template builder? Template builder is a quick uh, tool to create a highly responsive device responsive interface. And it's kind of a JSON-like, it looks a bit scary from the beginning, but it's it's really easy to learn it and basically consists of several blocks where you can add those blocks of buttons, blocks of images. And here I'm gonna just change uh, those labels. What, um, is it a cat or dog? Is, is it a cat or a dog, right? And I'm gonna change button labels here as well. And gonna have the third button for exceptions. We're gonna talk about this a little bit later. We also have also have those shortcuts uh, for buttons. You see, I'm adding them so that performers can actually click on their keyboards uh, with hotkeys, clicking one instead of uh, pointing their um, their mouse at exactly at the button. So it will save our time and their time as well. Great. Uh, I think you're going to swap them. One, two, and three. Okay, great. So I think we're done with the interface and this is how it will look like. And you see, if I try to submit this interface, um, it won't let me do that because we have a button validation block here as well. And I need to submit. And I see the basic dummy result here, right? So you can change your interface, you can review it, and you can see the submitted data, data here. Great, uh, let's move further and uh, check our data specification. In this block, we see input and output data. Uh, so this is basically what we will feed to the locker and what we will get as a result. So in input data, we would have image with URLs. So you need to store that images somewhere on your cloud server or maybe on some remote server and provide URL support to locker so we can show those uh, images from URLs right here in the interface, right? And as output data, we would have uh, just a string uh, consisting of those labels, one of those labels, stock, cat, or other. So click in save. And instruction for performers. So here, uh, you need to explain your performers what to do in your tasks. Um, so you need to be really careful here because uh, usually performers on the locker are uh, not very skilled in very complicated tasks. So you need to make them make your tasks as simple as possible and ask and make the instruction as concise and clear as possible. So uh, I have already prepared the instruction for our locker. So I will be a little bit cheating here because I just want to save time because you probably don't want to see me uh, type in that instruction, <laughs> right? And uh, this is what we will have, and you can preview the instruction. So the markup is also accessible here. You can uh, change uh, the size and the font of your text and highlight some important parts here. So I'm just explaining to our performers that uh, they uh, just need to identify if it's a cat or a document picture, and uh, you need always to you always need to co cover some uh, corner cases. For example, what if we have several uh, animals in the picture, or for example, what we have uh, cats, health cat, health dog in the picture. Well, really realistic situation, but so uh, we need to cover those cases, and that's why I have uh, this third no uh, third button called other. And I'm explaining uh, to our, my performers that they should click this button if they're unsure of the of the task. 
<clears throat> right. So the fourth part is in strong uh, translations. So you can easily translate your task in different languages. Well, not automatically, but providing the translation of every part of your interface, every label of your interface in the language of uh, your target audience. Right. For now, our source language is English, and we just be labeling our task in English. So let's click finish, and that's going to be it. Um, well, we are halfway through because we have created the project and we just need to download, uh, upload our data into the project and start it. So to do so, um, I will create a pool for our data. So you see that big button, add a pool. So uh, how it works on Teloka, every data that you upload to Teloka is a data batch. So we need to store that data batch somehow in some entity. So we have those pools for every data batch. So to upload our data batch, I need to first create the pool. So the pool name will be, is it a cat or a dog? And public description of my pool will be the same as the project description. Look at the picture and decide whether it is a cat or a dog. And you can set the price here. I will sell the price for um, a whole task page because in Teloka we have tasks by task pages. And performance will be submitting your tasks by task pages. So in one page, we would have um, nine tasks or ten, yeah, 10 tasks, right? And we will be paying uh, five cents per every task page, right? Uh, then we need to select our performers. So because we don't want to show it to like all the performers, we need to get the target audience. And uh, you can, as you can see, there are a lot of like different selection and filters where you can pick the best, the most suitable performers for your project. Uh, for example, sometimes you are targeting only to people where, with specific uh, operational system version or maybe specific device. Uh, or maybe with specific region region or location, maybe with some other demo demographic features. But for now, our pro project is kind of broad because any, any person can uh, decide whether it is a cat or dog in the picture. It just uh, We just require knowledge of English language here because since our instructions are in English, right? Great, so I will pick on the English performance here. And let's go to the next section. The next section is quality control. So probably one of the most important sections here for data batch, because you need to control your performers and filter out uh, those performers who are not diligent enough or who are not careful, or maybe there are there will be some bots or performers who just click and through carelessly through the task. So we need only those performers who are doing our task well. Uh, as you can see, if we click add quality control rule here, we have different quality controls and there are like really lots of them and it, there are all, every quality control here is highly customizable. You can set your own uh, settings and tweaks for every rule. Um, and we have a huge uh, database of best practices on how to use them on taloka.ai in knowledge uh, database. But for now, we can just uh, stay with quality control presets. For beginners, we have three different presets with elementary quality control rules, basic and advanced. Let's go with the basic ones. And let's see what uh, this preset can offer to us. So we have earnings here. Uh, so we will be restricting performers from earning too much because we need just to pick uh, a lot of different performers. We want to give a chance to different uh, performers to work in our project. We will also have the skipped assignments uh, quality control rule where we will be restricting performers from skipping our assignments in a row. We would need to be, we would need them to be diligent and work on every assign assignment that we provide them to collect um, their judgments. And probably the one of the main rules here is control tasks. What are control tasks? So um, you, when you upload in the data to Teloka, you also upload some uh, some tasks with known answers. Those answers will be hidden to your performers, but uh, 
uh, you can estimate and you can evaluate your performers based on those tasks. You will know what the answers are from your performers and you can uh, calculate what the accuracy of your performers while doing your tasks. So in this particular rule, we will be waiting for at least four, we will collect at least four different, um, four answers from one performer uh, to our control tasks. And we will calculate uh, correct responses rate for this performer. And if this rate drops below 75%, we will ban this performer on the project for two days, for 10 days, right? So I hope that's more or less clear. Uh, let's not uh, stop on that for too long, but in, just in a nutshell, this is how it works. And we will be uploading some control tasks along with our data to be labeled uh, onto local in a, just in a couple of minutes. Right. Uh, the next section is overlap. What overlap is, um, is basically how you, uh, is basically when you give every single task that you have to several performers to collect several opinions, several judgments, on this specific task because you need to uh, employ wisdom of the crowd. You need to understand, get some understanding from several people that this is really a cat, right? So we will stay with overlap of three. I think that would be enough because uh, the project is quite simple, right? And we also have this smart speed quality balance tool. Uh, I can explain to you how it works. Uh, on Toloco, we have a lot of um, different projects in different domains and placed by different clients. And we have our own uh, machine learning smart tools that are evaluating constantly, evaluating our, performer, uh, our, uh, our performer's skills, right? So uh, we can analyze whether performer is good across all the projects, and we can derive some sort of rating uh, across the whole platform. So here, you can, based on that rating, you can actually take the best pick of performance for your project. Of course, there's a speed and quality trade-off because by doing this, you restrict the access to some of the performers. But for this project, we don't have that much volumes. So I think just uh, shifting that uh, scroller to 50% would do the trick. And the last, the last touch would be, I'm just uh, setting time per task queue in seconds. I think just one minute is quite enough for the simple task because it's just identifying cats and dogs. Right, and I'm clicking save. And we're done. We are ready to upload the data. So I have already prepared um, data for this task in TSV format. And right now I need to decide uh, how many tasks I will have on the task page. So if you, we go back, we see this task page and we have 10 different tasks. So you may think as a performer that all those tasks are usual tasks, but one of them is actually a control task with a known answer. And by this control tasks, uh, we will understand what the skill of the performer. So I will keep just one control tasks uh, uh, mixed up randomly with those nine main tasks on the task page. And I'm gonna upload this uh, file that I have prepared. Great. So we will be having 129 tasks, out of which uh, there will be 13 control tasks. Lovely. And I think uh, we are pretty much ready to go. So I'm going to click this uh, big blue button here. Mm -hmm. Let's wait just for a second. And while we're waiting for the pool to start, I'm gonna um, show you some of the stati basic statistics that are available here in the pool that you can collect about your pool, right? So you can control and monitor constantly your pool after it has started. Uh, you can control average assignment submit time. Uh, so meaning uh, what is the average time? Oh, okay. I see some of the settings may be incorrect. So tasks are not available on mobile devices, 
but this is okay because uh, I think we don't have that many performers and the pictures are quite large. So I think the best pick of performers would be just uh, getting those performers who have uh, desktop uh, devices. So let's continue. And the pool has started. Let's just wait for it to be completed. And meanwhile, I'm gonna show you some statistics. So you see right now, uh, we see that there are 9,131 people available and active actually working on the platform just for right now from different corners of the earth. Probably they speak different languages, but they speak English for sure because we've set this filtering for English language. Let's renew the page and see what's the progress of the pool. You see uh, the whole all the tasks that we had, like 39 task pages, has been already taken by different performers and there are already three tasks that uh, three task pages that were done so let's wait a little bit more um, while i can show you the statistic page of the pool so <clears throat> here you can control um, your statistics in dynamic you can see what number of assignments that your performers have submitted average overlap for them submit time budget that you spent average course per task that you are getting and earnings per hour for every performer. And you see the quality is quite high right now, around 0 0.85. And how many performers you are blocking by your rules, because we set some quality control rules and we have set some banning rules. So here you can control that. Let's get back to the pool because I have some thoughts that it's almost finished. Yeah, it is. So we have just five active assignments here. So let's wait for a little bit and it will be done. Mm -hmm. So when the pool is done, uh, this, is, this is not going to be the end because you have collected uh, several opinions from uh, different performers. So for every task, you will have three different opinions since we have set overlap to three. You can actually aggregate those uh, judgments to one single opinion. And we have two pre-built aggregation math mathematical models here, uh, namely David Skin aggregation model and aggregation by scale model. You can pick any of that those ones and start aggregation to and get some results for every single label that you have sent to Taloka. Mm -hmm. So some performers are a little bit lazy, but yeah, in the meanwhile, I think we can cover some questions if we have them. Uh, I don't know, Anya, do we have any? Mm -hmm. Okay, I can read them by myself, I guess. Mm -hmm. So the first question is, do you have profiles of the performers? Yes, we do. If you go to the to the user sections, you can go to every performer's profile that you have here, uh, that's of those ones who worked on your project. And you see who is that guy and so where is he from? Uh, and what is his rating uh, across the whole platform? What's his age, citizenship, and what languages he can speak, and what skills he already got? Uh, so we don't see any skills here so far. We can uh, control his earnings, uh, some metadata about the performers, such as some operational system version, and any bonds that we has issued to the performer. From the performer's side, uh, they actually also have um, have a profile uh, page with the details and achievements. So it's quite it's somewhat a gamification for them. They have different ratings and achievements, so they can um, be motiv they can stay motivated to work better on Taloka. Uh, the next question was, um, can you do voice annotation? Right. Yes, we can, and uh, you can actually check that um, template we have here. So we have transcribing of uh, audio recordings, right? So if you select them, oh, you can actually preview that just from that page. Uh, where was that? Ah, this one. Yeah, so you can trust, you can listen to some recording, 
and then you can transcri transcribe it. Then um, usually what we do, we post verify those ones by different lockers. Uh, we also have, of course, voice recordings. And if you're interested in trans detailed transcription, first you create one product with transcription of that voice, and then you can do, for example, uh, name entity recognition if you'd like to, and yes, yeah, split those replics into yeah, for example, this one or this one, so something like this, right? Uh, next question: What languages do you have in Tiloka? Uh, so basically, any of those we have uh, more than several millions of performers on the platform, so we have uh, like. I can name the most popular ones that people are um, really interested of uh, are English, uh, Portuguese, Japanese, Swedish. We have um, Dutch, German, of course, uh, Spanish, um, Russian, like, and much, much more. Like, basically, if we don't have any language on the platform, you can. Uh, requested from us because we we have our acquisition team which can attract more telokers and bring more telokers from specific regions or with specific languages to the platform mm -hmm. so uh so this kind of audience fits uh your product uh, needs right oh thank you Anna. thank you for sharing teloka.ai knowledge base yeah uh, just want to stress it once more. Really cool section here on our website where you can check different demos, different projects. They're already pre-built, so you can use the data from those projects. You can use quality controls those uh, by those projects. So go ahead and use them. And uh, some uh, best practices on how to set up your project, which is really good. Uh, Alona, Alona, thank you for the questions. Do you give only one control task or are there are many? Be more. What is the right amount if it is possible to give more than one? So the right amount of the control tasks uh, is about five, 10 percent uh, of your usual data. So if you go to the project, oh, basically, let's actually check if the project is finished because, yeah, this is what we are waiting for. Yes, it is. It's completed. So basically, it's good to have 10% um, of control tasks out of your main data, right? So so that you can continuously control your performers. Uh, sorry, um, I'm just going to pause for a second with reading those questions and show you how aggregation works. Uh, let's use David's skin aggregation model. So it's a smart aggregation. There is a lot of math behind it. If you're really curious, you can read the original uh, scientific article on that. But uh, I'm not I'm not going to go deeper into it. And uh, I've just started the aggregation. Let's just wait for it to be finished while I'm reading the rest of the questions. How do you source performance and how do you train them? So we have acquisition team who is um, acquiring those performers and who's bringing those performers uh, on the platform. Like there are a lot of different projects on the platform and this is actually the responsibility of, um, of requester, of, um, of customer to train those performers because uh, the crowd is diverse and uh, performers are not ready to really specific projects. And the key is to decompose your task to simple matters. Alternatively, if you have a very um, difficult task, you can set up some training pools and uh, examples. So uh, in projects, right inside the project in the locker, you can set up some training tasks. So your performers can go through those tasks or where you don't pay them for, for it and they actually learn on how to do your task. And just right after it, you can allow those performers to pass the training to go inside of your project and to work on your project. Uh, okay, so can you annotate a person's mood from voice? Well, you can try. You can ask the lockers if, um, if they can identify the mood of the voice by the voice. Uh, well, that's quite a challenging project, of course. 
but yeah, you can try that and check the quality because uh, we've been trying to obtain different uh, projects in Pontaloka, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's wait for aggregation to be finished. And it's finished. Let's download the results and see how the results look like. So this is your results and you have some confidence for every result. So obviously those results are not like 100% sure, like not many of them because we have created just a simple project with a simple quality controls. We could do better, but let's check some of the results with really high confidence. So for example, let's check this link. So this is this is a, this is a doc clearly. So we have this output doc, right? Let's check another one with 70% confidence result, also doc. So we can analyze the quality here, but like from the first glance, it, it looks all right-ish. So cats stay cats and dogs stay dogs, which is good. Great. And on this cute, cute note, I would like to pass my microphone to David, maybe to deal with the rest of the questions that we have in the chat, or maybe some yes, verbal yes, questions. Sure. Sure, you, guys. Uh, Ke Kevin here. Thank you, Thank Roman. You Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Roman, uh, for this great uh, uh, live demo. So, yes, I think we can uh, move forward to our questions. Um, and we I have think Roman answered uh, most of them, but uh, there are yeah, some. Yeah, but we, but we have more. So, um, yes, yes. Don't like, I, I, I don't can take them. It. You, you will answer the, the, the Yeah, question. sure. Kevin is here asking uh, about the pricing. Yes. So, uh, by the way, Roman, you can actually show that. Uh, uh, Kevin, the pricing on the platform, this is one of the best uh, things about this, is that uh, you set your own price. So, the requester has the right, uh, basically, to determine uh, all along the process what he wants to pay for each task page. And a task page contains several tasks and you decide it. So there's a minimum amount basically, uh, for example, one cent for a task page. And here on that screen that Roman just showed, you choose how much you wanna pay for a task suit. The task suit in that case is a task page. So basically on that example of 10,000 articles, of course we need to calculate it, but, uh, Eventually, it comes up to a very small amount, and uh, you. The, the main point is that you set your own price. So, and uh, because this is a marketplace, so the performers choose uh, uh, which task they want to work in. So, choosing the price is also a very important, a very important uh, step along the process because it also affects the motivation of your performers and how well they perform on the tasks. So I hope that uh, was clear. But of course, if you need any further discussion, clarification, just reach out. We will follow up and uh, we can take this discussion and look more deeply into your uh, project. Yeah, yeah. For example, for this for this particular project, we have spent just two dollars for labeling those one hundred pictures. Yes, and to go a bit further you had another question kevin uh, train the performers or uh, do, do you train the performers or do we the customer do the training so this is a really good question and uh, roman uh, par partially answered that but uh, through through the process you can see that uh, the main uh, first uh, step is to write the instructions for the performers so uh, through writing the instructions, you make sure that they have a clear understanding on how to do your your task and perform in the highest quality. And uh, another really good point that Roman uh, made is the training. So, of course, uh, the requester sets the training on the platform, but we, the company at Local, we help, we can help you in using our best practices on how to do the training. So you will get the best uh, results from your performers. So the, it, it is done on the platform, but uh, you, we actually help you. We have a great team of uh, customer 
success manager and uh, cloud solution architects that are well uh, that work really well with the platform and can help our uh, clients and requesters to have the best training for their performers and to get the highest quality so i hope that was uh, clear and guys uh, we have uh, eight minutes left uh, right uh, if you have any more questions we will be happy to answer we had a q a session during the demo and i hope you liked it but uh, let me just pass the torch to anna our great moderator yes thank you and also actually you can raise your hand if you want and i can like uh allow you to talk if you want maybe to uh make a question ask a question live and uh yes we have some more minutes so uh, don't be afraid to send your questions or raise your hand to talk with us if you want. And uh, meanwhile, I cannot see at the moment any questions. Uh, meanwhile, I would like to um, to invite you to join our Slack community. Uh, you can find a QR code now uh, in your screen, uh, which you can like just. Uh, uh take your camera and you will be moved through to the slack uh, app uh, where you can find uh, many many more uh, interesting information about the loca our uh our knowledge base uh tools uh upcoming events and uh, just to communicate with us uh, or of course if you have any other questions later as well we will be uh, happy to answer them and uh, I think I think there's one more question. So uh, are there any projects in particular on Taloka that you found to be interesting? Uh, maybe Roman? All of them. <laughs> All of them, yes. Yeah. <laughs> no, but, but uh, <laughs> yes, to dive, uh, to answer this question a bit uh, more comprehensively, so we showed you a really simple use case, but uh, our great team here is uh, doing a lot of NLP projects, uh, uh, search relevance projects, image uh, classification. So basically anything that is machine learning related can be used uh, to be labeled into Loka and to leverage on the crowd of performers. So this this is a this is just a, the first step, and we have many many uh, use cases which you will see in our upcoming webinars, uh, and you will see more interesting use cases. And you can come to to, to our upcoming webinars and uh, have have your fun there. <laughs> Yeah, maybe uh, you can also clarify, like, uh, what do you mean by interest in uh, maybe some particular projects of your interest, of your interest is there. Um, I, I, I'm just not sure who answered that question because uh, it was anonymous. Uh, yeah, if you could like shed a little bit of a light on what particular project is of your interest, I can answer in more details. You mean the person who asked the question? Um, yes, uh, there's a question, will the recording be available? Uh, yes, we will send a follow up later uh later uh and it will be available uh for you uh, to watch again uh, this uh, webinar uh one more question how much that much time does it usually take the lockers to label a set of 1000 items yeah actually i can answer that uh if you remember in, in this during the slide i showed you some real use cases so it depends, it actually depends on the project and the complexity, but uh, for example, side-by-side -side comparison took uh, 10 minutes to solve exactly 1000 items. So it was really, really fast. Okay, thank you. Um, 
so yes, he's explaining, I think, to follow up, I am a university student and I'm interested in machine learning, but I'm unsure what projects are possible. Yeah, so as I shown to you, like uh, basically any type of project is possible, you can try it out on Taloka. So can I share my screen uh, on it just right now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, just if you have a look at the uh, project space and if you click create the project, all those templates are basically use cases that you can use, right? You can use uh, bargain boxes for image annotation. You can use anything related to image like classification, any side by side comparison, for example, let's imagine you have two different designs and you need to choose which one is the best one, right? Video moderation, sentiment analysis, uh, basically any type of the task, basic simple task that a human being can uh, work with so that performers can uh, work on that. And to prepare for your machine learning algorithms um, to get some training data, data for them. If you go to the talocker.ai, uh, website, you would see what we're capable of um, in different sections here. And of course, uh, we have some use cases here as well for computer vision, for NLP and others. And you can uh, study those use cases in details, what we support, what we can do, and uh, what is the form of uh, crowdsourcing here, right? So you, you may just contact, if you have some specific projects in mind, you may just contact us and uh, we may try to find uh, some uh, solutions for you or some suggestions what you can try on our knowledge base website. And uh, we also have some collaborations with the universities and for students. Uh, I think Anya will tell you a little bit later that. Yeah, sorry. Uh, thank you, Roma. Um, uh, you, you can find actual all this information, as I already mentioned, in our Slack uh, channel uh, community if you join it. Uh, and also, uh, what I wanted to say, um, we have uh, a great bonus for today. Uh, all of you uh, who participated to today in this webinar uh, will get a promo code uh, in the follow-up letter tomorrow, uh, which you can use to launch uh, a project, like to try how to do this. Um, so you, it will be very easy to use it. You just need to register in uh, in the in our website and in the field of uh, like enter promo code. You will enter the promo code that we will send you tomorrow. So just uh, wait for it and of course try to use it and launch launch your project. Um, I think we are. Uh, like finishing, we're out of time. Uh, and um, one more time, I would like to thank uh, thanks all of you, our great speakers, uh, David and Roma, uh, and all of you who joined us today. And we will be very happy to see you in our Slack uh, channel community. We will be happy to see your questions and answer them. Um, so uh, thank you and have a very good evening. Uh, and I hope also we can see you in our upcoming uh, events, educational events very soon. Have a good evening from us from Moscow. Bye-bye. Uh,